Hello, here we are in part three of the tea party and painting lace. Well, we've gone beyond lace. We've got the lace done and you can see it. All the little holes are in there and uh, they're all different colors, dark blue, dark gray, dark green, lighter green, pink. They're everywhere. <clears throat> and what I did was I softened this end, softened all this stuff on this end because I want this to fade out a little bit. Now, what I said in my last video was that we would continue to do the, the, the lawn down here, the grass, uh, so that this isn't floating in midair. However, um, I did something different. I, I had some, I had some shadowy looking um, trees and things in the background. Whoops, I don't know if you can see that. There used to be there. And I, uh, I erased them. <laughs> I took them out with a magic, uh, Mr. Clean magic eraser. And I have since uh, let that dry completely. And I didn't like what I had up there. I had an idea. Once the picture got done, I didn't, I just didn't like it. It didn't settle. So <clears throat> I took it out and I think I'm just going to put a plain, uh, something abstract in the background, sky, something. Anyway, we're going to do that today instead. So you're in for an experiment because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Usually I tell my students, plan the background as well as you plan the foreground because it's part of your composition and it's just as important a part as your subject matter. But for all my trying to plan it, it didn't work out this time. So we're just going to stab in the dark and see what we come up with. Anyway, in the meantime, what I'm going to do is turn my painting around. There you go. Don't get dizzy. So that I can see what I'm doing. Because I have a few things to have to cut into. Um, that will be... There, we got you situated so you can see. All right, now the first thing I'm going to do is the magic eraser uh, takes the paint out with a minimum of damage to the paper, but um, it doesn't signify that there's no damage to the paper. Um, so it's roughed up a little bit, uh, not too bad, but a little bit. So I'm going to take one of my handy dandy polishing stones over here. Washing stone, where are you? There we go. I have this big egg. It's a carnelian egg. Pretty, huh? Anyway, I'm going to start um, with some pressure. Sometimes I do this with a piece of uh, paper towel over it, but uh, to tell you the truth, yeah, that makes it quite a bit, quite a bit. Okay, so we'll do that, and then I'll get back to you. Okay, I've got <clears throat> all the, um, all the paper smoothed down a little bit, and we will begin. I'm going to use um, a couple of these little uh, Japanese, Chinese, whatever brushes. They hold a lot of water and they cover a lot of space. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is wet very carefully. I'm going to do this in sections. The base is too large for me. Some people might be able to do it, but I'm, I'm not that clever. So I'm going to have to do it in a sections at a time and um, go slow and lay my color where I want it. And I've got my color all mixed up. This is a combination of cerulean blue, cobalt blue, and a little bit of phthalo blue. Looks very dark, obviously, but 
um, once I put it in all this water, it ought to be just fine. Um, so we'll start with plain water. We're going to put it on fairly liberally. Um, being very careful around the edges. Now the trick to doing this in sections is to wet well beyond uh, where you're going to put your paint so that you don't get any hard lines. smaller brush. Wake it up. Put my color. Here we go. Here goes nothing. Wish me luck. Oh, that's dark. it here. That's a fingers are good. Okay, I want that fading out there. That's okay. Next section. Okay.
Okay, smaller brush. And I had a little water to that. Okay. Now we don't have to be quite so careful. No more, no more hats and faces to go around. So I might be able to get the whole thing in. The one drawback of these super hair brushes is they shed. <sighs> Fuzzies everywhere. All right. We got sort of a sky here. Which we're going to use some water and phase that out. Couple of little accents here and there.
that'll do for now. Okay. Well, I'm going to mix some color for my lawn. And then I'll get back to you. Okay, here we go. With the lawn, basically the same idea. Um, we're going to wet wet the whole area and put down a base color and make sure I've got all the underneath bits here where the tablecloth is buckled up a little bit and then here that will fade out just like the other did, kind of. No biggie. Okay. Water. These little flat brushes have such nice edges on them that you can use that point to get around all the little crevices and it saves having to use a tiny brush. Now all this is going to fade out, so I don't even know if I'm gonna put extra paint on there. It already has some. I'll give this another shot. Just make sure. Okay. That's just floating. Uh, it's like a little river in there, so I may give it a few seconds to yeah, pick up some of that. There. All right, I'm gonna take our smaller brush and start laying in our medium green. It's pretty bright because the grass under here is spring grass. It's uh, early spring grass, so it's really green. It's really Kelly green. It's almost an unnatural green. We'll take care of that. <laughs> now, I, I'm laying it pretty, pretty lightly. All right, and I think I'll take a thirsty brush and pick up some of that there. I don't need it to be. All right, now we're going to let that dry a little bit. 
Um, I'll put a couple of darker places in here and where it's going to be in more in focus, but not shadow color yet. Just, just to emphasize that this part is in focus, this part is not. Now it's really wet. So we're gonna to have to let that dry a little bit. Oh, I've got little wet spots. I splattered everywhere. All right, then we're gonna do the same in the middle, but I'm gonna let this dry a little bit. So um, I'll see you later. Okay. I refined the sky a little bit. See here. Neaten up around her head. We got that done and dried. I discovered that when I tried to paint in here, this was all so wet. I couldn't even put my arm down. So we're going to start on that center section. And I think the first thing I'm gonna do is put some um, masking fluid on her tiny little hairs. There's just too much to go around here. So um, we'll take care of that and be right back with you. Hi, um, I like to put my masking fluid in these tiny bowls, partly because I don't like leaving the bottle open. It just dries it out. And partly because it's just easier. <laughs> um, I'm not trying to dip down and not knowing how far I'm dipping and look at all that stuff. <clears throat> and um, I like to use uh, Windsor & Newton. Um, it's served me well. You can leave it on for weeks at a time. It still comes off nicely. Um, I know you're not supposed to leave it on for more than a few hours or a day or two, but I don't seem to be able to work like that. <laughs> so I end up, I also use these little guys uh, when I'm putting something like hairs, these are embossers. I have them all different sizes. This one is just a, um, there's the tiniest circle one. Get it focused here. And the other one is just a, a straight, it's not pointed. It's pointed, but it's not got a sharp tip on it. And I'll use those for the hair. So here we go. Let's give this a try. Let's see if I can get her in the picture here. <laughs> Zipper. Okay. We've got tiny little Sometimes it's easier to put a glop in the middle and just fan it out. That works. I'm actually doing the hairs already painted on the edge here. And then we'll 
do some top. And these guys. It takes a little patience, but then just about everything I do, the way I paint, just takes patience. There's nothing for it, no shortcut for it. I think I'll do around her face because it leaves such a hard line. I'll just be very careful. Okay, I might do a couple. All right, that's it for the masking fluid. The rest is just gonna have to be careful. So I may not do this area. I'll do this detailed stuff with smaller brushes here first. And because I'm cheap, I'm gonna put my my stuff back in the bottle. Now you can just let that dry. Little glass bottle's great. Let it dry, peel it off. These guys are great for small things like that. Um, even with a, with a brush, if you use an old brush to do larger areas of masking, um, use an old brush, use a little liquid soap first on it. It'll help the masking not to stick so badly wash it off regularly while you're using it and then you should be able to rinse it fine if you can't if there's residual stuff on the on the brush goo gone is a great invention it will take masking fluid out of any brush and then you just wash it in soap and water to get the oil out it's terrific stuff Alrighty, so now we're going to continue to use those greens but I'm going to use a much smaller brush. <clears throat> and add some water. Here we go. Um, not all that masking fluid is dry yet. So we'll start over here.
bit of green. water. Dry brush. We haven't decided what we're doing with that part yet. A little bit of green. Okay, I need to make some more of this green. It's um, all but gone. You know, I have quite a bit of water in that green, and I have water on the paper, so um, and the grass grows up. that for now. And then this guy. And I think what we'll do is take some of that green, add a little pink to it, and gray it down up there. Kind of pushes it into the distance. We don't know what's up there. We can't see it. It's not in focus.
Oh, well, there's some really tiny stuff in here. That's too much water. Thank you very much. In fact, it's such a tiny space, I probably wouldn't even need to use the water, except that I don't want the paint to be too concentrated. Okay, now this paper's getting really buckly because I've added a tremendous amount of water to here. So, we might want to uh, let it rest for a while and dry out just a tad. Upward motion. Okay, and my, all of that, that's not dry yet. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, we can do a little bit on this side too. There's not going to be much. Um, we're really phasing the color out by that stage. Um, but we'll give it a little bit of color. Yeah, I think that's probably just enough.
All right. That's for that side. This. This is still really wet. So I'm going to do this side. One thing about watercolor is if you can't, if you can't paint in one section because it's too wet, you can always move over to another section. That's where all the planning comes in. You know, when you're oil painting or using acrylics, you can have an idea in your mind and a composition and go with the flow and as it leads you and just keep moving. You can't do that with watercolor as easily, at least not the way I paint. So everything has to be planned out fairly carefully. And the disadvantage to that is that it does stifle some creativity and movement. Not all. I've discovered you can change things, surprisingly. I erased a whole set of trees and bushes up there um, it can be done, but for the most part, all the creative part is probably in the planning and in the deciding what you're going to do. Somebody asked me once, she wanted to do a, she was doing a thesis on daydreams. People how do they incorporate their daydreams into their careers or their, I thought it was an interesting subject anyway. She interviewed me for this thesis she was doing. Um, I thought, I don't know that you call these daydreams so much as brainstorming planning, but I go through in my head all kinds of things like brush strokes and where, where I'm going to put something, what, what technique I'm going to use for that particular um, area of the painting, um, how I'm going to accomplish a lot of things in the beginning for me were learning how to. How do, I, how, how, how do I paint hair? Well, trial and error with me mostly is how I learn. And, and so I would, um, each time I paint, I brainstorm about how I wanted to go about it. Then I'd put it into practice. Well, if it didn't work out real well, I would make a note of that in my head and the next time I painted hair, I would do something different until I had a system down pretty well that worked well for me. So there's still room for creative process. And of course, people do watercolors all different ways. You can do them immediately, a la prima, and be abstract and pour and do all kinds of fun things. All right. Now we have that one. There's a little bit more here. 